VetsCast, episode 13 for March 2023, a routine vet visit by Anya Owl. Hello and welcome to CatsCast, your monthly feline fiction podcast. I'm your editor and host, Laura Perlman. One quick announcement before we get started, CatsCast will be open for short fiction submissions March 11th through 19th. Please go to escapeartist.net slash CatsCast for details. This month, I'm pleased to bring you a routine vet visit by Anya Ao. This story is a Cats cast original. Our author this week is Anya Ao. Anya Ao is the author of The Firebird's Tale and Cradle and Grave, and is an Aurealis Awards finalist. Her short stories have appeared in publications such as Asimov's, Uncanny, Fantasy Magazine, and more. Born in Singapore, Anya has a Bachelor of Laws from Melbourne University and a Bachelor of Applied Design from Billy Blue College of Design. She lives in Melbourne with her two cats, working as a graphic designer and illustrator for a creative agency. Her latest book, the space opera Ion Curtain, is out now. She can be found at AnyaSY.com or on Twitter at AnyaSY. Our narrator this week is Sharon Sheen. Renshin was born in Taiwan and lives with her husband in Vancouver, Canada. She loves to spend time with her friends and family, seeing the world, and enjoying food. By the way, we know Renshin is serious about that last bit, because in the bio she sent me, she spelled food with six O's. Now hug the fluffy demon that lives in your house and listen closely, because there's something we need to tell you. A Routine Vet Visit by Anya Ao, read by Xie Renxing. Murder! Arson! Kidnapping! Help! I'm being oppressed! As the passing jogger slowed down and cast a suspicious look in their direction, Yun Feng dug her thumbnail into her index finger, drawing blood and pressing another droplet onto the yellow talisman she held in her palm. The jogger blinked, and sped up, disappearing around the prominent Cat Specialist's feline-only vet clinic sign on the corner of the block. Bobo, please, Info muttered. At her feet, the fluffy white cat in the cat carrier rattled the metal grate with a paw. You don't love me anymore. I've said that I feel completely fine. I'm a cat demon, not a cat. Why do I have to go to a cat vet? We should go to a demon doctor. You yourself said the demon doctor's been missing for 300 years. Calm down. Yunfeng squatted by the crate, meeting Baobao's furious blue eyes. You vomited blood yesterday. Isn't that normal? Baobao shot back. How is something like that normal? In all the TV shows you watch, people vomit blood all the time. Usually, they feel better afterwards. Yunfeng rubbed a palm slowly over her face. For the last time, period dramas, especially wuxia shows, are not representative of reality. There is no qigong in this world, remember? There is still Taoist magic and demons, Baobao said. He shot the clinic a resentful stare. Why must we wait on the street? This is an injustice, an outrage. We're being exposed to the elements. The vet clinic's black and white cat peered out from behind the sign and ducked away as Yunfeng smiled and waved awkwardly at it. Other animals could sense what Baba was and usually steered clear. Hush, I'll buy your favorite roast goose later, all right? If you behave and don't traumatize the vets and nurses. You can't buy me with goose. It have to be goose and shao ro. From, from Secret Kitchen. You can't eat that much fat. Fine, fine, Yunfeng said as Baba opened his mouth to scream. Her phone buzzed her as he huffed in satisfaction. Hello? Hi, Yunfeng. This is Josie from Cat Specialists. You and Baobao can come in now. Thanks. Yunfeng hung up 
and hauled the large crate through the door. The nurse smiled as she showed them into a consultation room. As the door closed, Yunfeng opened the crate and dug a still sulking Bobo out. Remember your promise, she whispered. Secret kitchen, Bobo hissed. He crouched on the consultation bench, studying the framed photographs of cats on the wall. Why display pictures of their other victims? This person must be a sadist. Please be quiet, Yunfeng said, even as the vet let herself into the room with a smile. The smile wavered as she glanced between Yunfeng and Babao. Then the vet slowly closed the door behind her. A seal glowed over the white surface, locking all sound within the room. Yunfeng stiffened vigilantly as she felt Babao tense against her. The vet looked to be in her 50s, a Chinese woman with graying hair combed into a neat bun, stooped in her neat coat. With her warm dark eyes and her face creased with laugh lines, Yunfeng wouldn't usually have looked twice at such a person as she met them on the street. However, the faint chill that began to permeate the air the moment the vet walked in was an obvious red flag, not to mention that effortless spell. Dr. Bai, we don't want any trouble, Yunfeng said. That is not a cat, Dr. Bai said simultaneously. Baba arched in Yunfeng's grip, his fur standing up along his back and fluffed tail. As he began to growl, Yunfeng held him more tightly. It's broad daylight, so you're not a ghost. That ying energy, though. You're one of the impermanences? Guards of the Yang Wang court? Dr. Bai looked amused. She adjusted her spectacles and circled to the computer in the corner of the room, ignoring how Babao and Yunfeng flinched as she passed. She flicked upon Babao's new case file. Thirteen years old? Really? Yunfeng glanced at Babao. He reluctantly settled down, though he snuggled against Yunfeng's belly. Nine hundred and sixty, he said, if sullenly. You've lived for so long? Yet, your cultivation base is so low. Can you even change to a human form? Dr. Bai asked. Babao bristled. So what if I can't? Just asking. Dr. Bai glanced at Yunfeng. Why did a Taoist priest befriend a cat Yao Guai? He's harmless. Well, mostly harmless. I mean, he's harmless to other people. He'd be completely harmless if he stopped smashing peanut butter jars and ripping up toilet paper rolls, Yunfeng said. You were out at work, and I was bored. I can't believe you're nitpicking my behavior before a Bai Wuchang, Bao Bao said, incredulous. I'm not in that business any longer. I thought that was obvious from my clothes. Dr. Bai gestured at herself. Normal clothes, no armor. What can I do for you today? Yunfeng looked at Bao Bao, who blinked owlishly. You're not going to haul me off to the underworld? Bao Bao asked cautiously. I used to escort vagrant souls to judgment. It was never my business when a soul passed through to the Yang Wang court. Isn't destroying demons and annihilating devils more likely something that your companion would do? Dr. Bai pointed out. Oh, Yunfeng? She's fine. I've been with her family for five generations as a consultant. It was an agreement with her ancestor. They feed me, and I provide advice, Babo said, wrinkling his nose. Though, it's been harder and harder for Yunfeng to find work in her ancestral line. Do you know? She has to do something called a day job now? Doesn't make a lot of money either. Gotta keep someone fed, and they're a litter box fresh. Yunfeng said. Oh, now you're blaming me, Baba glared at her. Dr. Bai cleared her throat. What's wrong with Baba? He's been vomiting bile for a few days, losing weight too. Last night, he threw up blood. Yunfeng had nearly taken Baba to the nearest vet ER hospital then and there, but for Baba's dissuasion. I thought maybe he ate a bit of plastic again, but that normally, um... Resolve itself in a day or so. May I? 
Dr. Bai stretched a hand over. Bao Bao tensed up, but didn't react as Yun Feng nudged him over. Picking Bao Bao up, Dr. Bai weighed him on the scale. She recorded the number and set him back on the consultation bench, rubbing fingers over his rib and belly. Any discomfort in the stomach? A Bai Wu Chang is molesting me. I'm uncomfortable everywhere, Bao Bao said, standing stiffly on the bench. I feel like she's going to scythe off my head at any moment. It's a medical examination, Yun Feng said with a soothing smile. You're not the one getting felt up. I am. Wait, what are you doing with that? Where are you going to put that thermometer? Hold on, I am not a cat. I'm not a... Be brave, Dr. Bai said. She inspected the thermometer, then wiped it off and set it aside. Baba sank listlessly onto the bench. It's over. The untouched chrysanthemum and pure body that I've guarded like a jade for 960 years were ruined by a Bai Wu Chang. I have nothing to live for. Yunfeng patted the fluffy puddle of sadness. Don't be so dramatic. I'm going to need a blood and urine sample and an x-ray. Dr. Bai scooped Babo up. Don't scratch. Babo stiffened at the pressure that leaked briefly out from the otherwise unobtrusive looking woman, a reminder of the ominous aura that the guardian of the Yang Wang court usually wore. Before he can even whimper, Dr. Bai had carted him out of the consultation room, closing the door behind her. Yunfeng sat beside the bench, checking her phone. Most of the messages were from friends inquiring after her cat. Three were from the family chat, discussing whether Baba had been cursed. Yunfeng didn't think so. Not even her grandmother, with all her experience, had been able to perceive any sort of black chi or curse mark on Baba. A vet nurse returned with Babo slumped in her arms. Dr. Bai will be back shortly, she said with a smile as she deposited Babo gently on the bench. As the nurse left and closed the door, Yunfeng cautiously stroked Babo's back. What's wrong? Babo pressed his face to the cold bench. They, they extracted my vital essence, squeezed out my... They squeeze me like a bottle to get my pee. I've never been so insulted. This is a shame that will last a lifetime. A blood debt. Is that how they get urine samples out of cats? Don't remind me. Also, I'm not a cat. That works out, doesn't it? After all, Dr. Bai isn't human either. I can't believe that you're conspiring with the Bai Wu Chang to torture me. I've been a loyal friend of your family for hundreds of years. Your great-grandfather used to salute whenever I crossed his path. Your great-great-grandfather would... All right, all right. Yunfeng tickled Bao Bao behind his ears. Don't think that you can coax me so easily. Bao Bao didn't look up. He twitched when the door behind him opened to admit Dr. Bai, who chuckled at the cat demon's desolate appearance. Normally, Dr. Bai said, as she closed the door and sealed it against sound, I'd get the blood sample sent off to a lab. However, I doubt Bao Bao's blood will look exactly like that of a cat's. So I've taken a few shortcuts. She sobered. Bao Bao has IBD, irritable bowel disease. It's not curable but it can be managed with diet and medication when necessary. Wait, wait. Baba lifted his head. Yao Guai, don't get sick. You're a quack doctor. Yao Guai, don't, but you are not entirely a Yao Guai. I don't think you've been so for a while. And it will worsen over time. Didn't you realize? When Baba only gave Dr. Bai a blank look, she said, you're 960 years old. What about it? Baba asked. Yao Guai typically only live a maximum of a thousand years. Unless they can cultivate enough to reach nirvana and ascend to heaven, Dr. Bai said, folding her arms. 
No Yaguai has managed that in a millennium, though. She glanced at Ring Fong with a wry smile. Do you know why? My grandmother said once that the earth is slowly dying, strangling to death under the weight of human greed and indifference. She said the first thing to go would be all that was strange and inexplicable in the world. Yunfeng shivered. So I just have to gain more cultivation in the next 40 years? Baba asked. The demon core within you is already eroding. You're becoming mortal, which is why you're becoming more and more like a cat. Dr. Bai smiled, hell only pity. Cultivate nirvana within 40 years? You can't even change into a human form. Your bedside manner is horrible, Baba muttered. Since Baba isn't a cat, does he still have to take cat medication? Or do you mean some sort of alchemical medication? Yunfeng asked. He's enough of a cat now that cat medication should work. Either way, his pancreatic levels are off the charts. Have him take one steroid pill in the morning, half a night, and half of one of the antibiotic pills daily. Watch his water intake. The meds can cause diabetes. If he starts having excessive thirst, come back to me. I'll also give you some samples of the vet diets I have here that are suitable for cats with his disease. See if he's willing to eat any of them. I really doubt it, Yunfon said as Baba looked horrified. Alternatively, he could try eating a completely raw diet, Dr. Bai said. Try him on novel proteins, like quail or rabbit. You'd be able to find them from a decent butcher. You're trying to torture me. This is a scam. Yunfeng, don't be fooled, Baba wailed. Come back in three months. I'll get the nurse to take the prescription and the samples to the front counter, Dr. Bai said. She smiled faintly. Good luck. Baba slumped on his back in the front passenger seat on the ride home. The very picture of grief. Cheer up, Yunfeng said as she drove. If you don't want to be medicated or eat a vet diet... Hurry up and ascend to immortality. Easy for you to say. Baba rubbed his stomach with a furry paw. I was getting the occasional stomach ache, but I thought... Never mind what I thought. He rolled over onto his flank. Info? If I'm becoming a cat, do you think I'll start... Do you think I'll regress completely? Become an animal? The fear in Baba's tone had Yunfeng pull up and park at the side of the street. She hugged Baba into her arms, petting him and burying her face in his fur. It doesn't matter what happens, she said in a muffled voice. You've always been there for my family and me. So let us be there for you too. Baba snuggled close. His tongue rasped against Yunfeng's chin, sandpaper rough. This isn't so bad, he said in a small voice. Normal cats only get, what, 20 years or so with their servants, if they're lucky? I've got twice that, even now. Don't give up. Who knows? Maybe you'd be able to ascend. We just met a Bai Wu Chang working as a vet, visibly aging too. I think your grandmother's right about the world. You're giving up? Seems inevitable, isn't it? Babao's tail went limp. Oh, all right then, Yunfeng said. That's all you're going to say? Baba glanced up at her. What else can I say? You're resigned to slowly becoming just a cat. That means eating your meds on time. Maybe you'd need to get neutered. I heard neuter cats live longer. What? Baba bristled. What's more, since you're now going to have to eat a vet diet, that means no more roast goose or shao rou or steak or tang yuan or you tiao or xiao long bao or... The air grew cold, then scoldingly hot. I'm not going to give up, Baba snapped. His eyes briefly flashed golden. Then don't, Yunfeng kissed Baba on the top of his head. Whatever happens, we'll be there too. Baba calmed down, 
the temperature around him turned back to a comfortable chill. Sorry I lost my temper, he said after a while. An apology? That's a first. Special circumstances. Babo nudged his way out of Yunfo's arms and curled back up on the passenger seat. My grandmother has books about the attainment of Nirvana. I'll go through them with you once we get home, Yunfo offered. Right. You do, however, still have to take the medications. Bai Wuchang gave them to us. They can't be useless. Babo huffed. Fine. And try the vet diets. Do I get one last roast goose? Not until you cultivate a human form. Babo pressed his face into the car seat. Life is full of suffering. And we're back. That was a routine vet visit by Anya Ao. If you'd like to read more by Anya, check out her latest book, Ion Curtain. It's a queer space opera with corsairs, espionage, and runaway AIs. I asked Anya if she had any story notes, and she said, My elderly cat, 14, has IBD, which means quarterly vet visits, and each time it's a huge drama. I love him, though, and fear losing him, which is what inspired the story. Anya also says, the cat in my profile picture is Pascal, my younger ginger himbo of an adopted cat, four years old, immense energy. But the cat that inspired the story is Russ, a 14-year-old Berman. He's had IBD for years, but it worsened during the pandemic. It's a life of medications, vet checks, and vet diets now for him. He loves watching some films, TV, chilling in the sun, and things that he's sadly now allergic to, like tuna. I love the humor in this story. Some of the dialogue reminded me of Thunder's grudging agreement to allow me to give him his medication in exchange for treats afterwards. Beyond that, though, I was moved by Baobao's initial denial and eventual acceptance of the fact that his life was changing, and not in a direction he would have chosen, and also by the strong bond between Baobao and Yin Fang. This episode is dedicated to Ren Shin's cat Winky, who died a few days after she narrated this story. She says... We inherited Winky from our then landlord and immediately it felt like he was part of our small family. He was suspicious of anyone who came into the house, especially children. Once he warmed up to you, he would share with you his favorite place in the entire world, your lap. Winky provided comfort to my dad when he was in palliative care and then continued to live with my mom after dad's passing. Eventually, Father Time caught up with Winky at the ripe old age of 17. He will be fondly remembered as a well-loved member of our family. This is Laura again. Winky sounds like he was a great cat, and thank you so much, Ren Shin, for sharing that memory of him with us. Today's cover art is Cat's Cat Supervising Editor Persephone, which reminds me, if you have a cat picture you'd like to see featured on the podcast, please send it in a sentence or two about your cat to catscast at escapeartists.net. For cat pictures, cat story recommendations, and more, follow Cat's Cast Pod on Twitter. We'd love to hear from you there or on the Escape Artists Discord server, Facebook, or Instagram. We'll be back next month with episode 14 on the Escape Artists premium content feed and in two months with episode 15 on both feeds. In the meantime, you can find more narrative goodness on our weekly sister podcasts, Escape Pod for Science Fiction, Podcastle for Fantasy, Pseudopod for Horror, and Cast of Wonders for YA. Today's episode is brought to you by audio producers Wilson Fowley and Dave Robison, associate editors Kitty Sarkozy and Tarver Nova, and me, editor Laura Perlman. Our opening and closing music is Easy Lemon by Kevin McLeod. Cat's Cast is a production of Escape Artists Incorporated and is brought to you with a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License. Don't change it, don't sell it, please do share it. Cat's Cast relies on listener donations, so thank you so much if you've already donated. 
You can support us and all the other EA podcasts by donating via patreon.com slash EA podcasts or through the website escapeartist.net. You can also help us out by leaving a review or rating at Apple Podcasts or wherever you normally leave those things. Cat's Cast is distributed monthly on the Escape Artist premium content feed. A separate public Cat's Cast feed gets a subset of those episodes. More details can be found in the show notes or at escapeartist.net slash catscast. Thanks for listening, and until next time, keep in touch! <laughs>